Hello again everyone on YouTube. So, I am here now with my second uh, review in my series of reviews for the first three Metal Gear Solid games. And so, just in case you haven't seen the last video, I will explain the criteria again. I'll be doing this in the next video as well. Uh, so, um, the way these reviews will go is I'm going to review the first three Metal Gear Solid games and not 4 or Peace Walker because I can't play 4. There's no possible way right at the moment for me to play it. And Peace Walker, I just never got to play it yet. Uh, this will cover um, things about the entire game. There may, there may not be spoilers at some parts, but for the most part, there'll be lots of spoilers in this review. So, if you haven't played any of the, in, haven't played the game that I'm reviewing, go play that game, then come back and watch the video. And finally, I will be getting all these done before Metal Gear Solid 5 comes out on September 1st. So, without further ado, let's get into the very controversial, into my review of the very controversial Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. So the game starts out, you're playing a Solid Snake, you're on, you uh, infiltrate this uh, marine tanker that um, is supposedly held, holding a new type of Metal Gear unit called Metal Gear Ray, and Snake and Otacon, now part of a non-governmental organization called Philanthropy, who is basically tasked with destroying multiple Metal Gear units after Ocelot from the last game, uh, sent data all about Rex all over the place, all the internet and everything. So now Snake has been tasked to, I think he's just getting photos of it, and that's it. I don't think he was actually meant to destroy it there. So anyway, he gets on he gets on the boat, he infiltrates, but then he realizes Russian troops have come and tried to take over the boat, basically. So eventually Snake gets down to where Ray is, and before he and after he uploads the photos and whatnot, before he can do anything else, Ocelot um, reveals himself to to he double crosses the Russian um, commander that has been leading the troops that are on the boat by killing him and he kills the marine commander that is on the boat the marine colonel that is on the boat too and he and he comes to take back Metal Gear Ray, he gets a Metal Gear Ray but not before he reveals to Snake that he had like he has put Liquid's arm on his own where he got it cut off by Great Box in the last game so uh, after that he uh, and Liquid, in case you don't know, is somehow possessing Ocelot when he does this. So, then Ocelot escapes with Ray, and he blows the entire tanker up, supposedly killing Snake. Cut uh, forward two years later, a big governmental project has been done in which they're trying to clean up the oil spillage from the tanker using this thing known as the Big Shell. It's a bunch of hexagon-shaped buildings all around meant to clean up the uh, where uh, the uh, river that the tanker sunk in and you are sent in Raiden is sent in to uh, infiltrate to because terrorists have actually taken over this place and um, he is sent in to rescue the president um, and stop these terrorists because and they have requested that they have threatened to launch a nuke uh, if they don't get 30 billion dollars or something like that and something else I can't exactly remember right off the back of my head and Raiden goes to infiltrate the um, big shell to rescue the president um, as a part of a new like fox hound team and these terrorists are known as the Sons of Liberty with the help of former dead cell members and anti-terrorist organization and that is where the game starts now this time around in the game, there are lots of new gameplay uh, elements added to this from the first Metal Gear Solid. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is how you can like back up against the wall, which you, which you could do in the first Metal Gear Solid, but now you can like crouch down and like peek around corners and whatnot. And if you, if an enemy's back is turned to you or whatnot, you can like pop out of the corner and shoot them, and then pop and then get back into cover before they see you. Also, there's um, tons more weapons and gadgets to use in this game um, from the, since the last game, and which is an obvious, duh. 
but uh, you also get um, the silencers for specific guns so that your gunshots can't be heard by any of the enemies in the game. So that's a very useful tool to use. And you also get another new gun, which is the tranquilizer. And if you play it right, you don't, uh, you don't intentionally kill anyone. The in you can n intentionally not kill anyone the whole game. Even the bosses have like the stamina bar that will deplete when you shoot them with the tranquilizer. Um, make it so that you're not actually killing them, you're just beating them by taking down their stamina. Needless to say, the tranquilizer gun was very, very useful during my playthrough of this game. Uh, also in this game, you could uh, walk up behind enemies, point your gun at them, and tell them to freeze, and they'd stop. And then you, if you point it at their head long enough, then they'll eventually give up their dog tags, in which you can then shoot them with the tranquilizer dart in the head, or just kill them straight out. Also, the enemy AI in this game got amped so much from the last game. Now, enemies can, um, if you're running around mindlessly above or below railing, the enemies will be able to see you from there, and they won't alert, but they'll be like, what was that? And then you'll have to make sure you get out of there before they get to back to where you they saw you running. Also, you have to make sure that you're... You can actually walk walk in this game and not just run so that if you go over like panels of some sort, like a metal grate or something, enemies won't hear you and then you can take them out much easier. Also, the, in like different areas, there the AI works like a group now and not just like individual different enemies. And so if they find a dead body you ha or they find a trank body, you have to make sure you get it out of there and hide it somewhere. And if you take out the radio guy that's supposed to report in the status of the place every once in a while, you have to make sure you uh, you have to make sure you don't take him out, or else you're not gonna be <laughs> you're not gonna be in a good situation there. Or you can just destroy his radio. And other than that, uh, there's a lot of other things I need to talk about too. Uh, so one second, give me a second. Also, if you get these dog tags from the enemy when you are pointing your gun at their head, you can collect a certain amount to which you can get certain, if you get a certain amount, then you get unlockables to use the next time you play the game. Also, there's a first person mode in this game, so you can aim your gun first person and do more accurate shots, so you can do headshots, so in order to kill or trink an enemy straight away, and there's... A few more things you can do, I'm sure. <laughs> so another thing you can do is you can like jump over railing so that you uh, can sneak past guards that way. They won't see you if you're like hanging up below it and whatnot. It's actually a very, very innovative game. Alert status was also amped up in this game in which uh, if you uh, are alerted and an enemy sees you and alerts um, everyone, then They'll, the whole entire squad will try to flank you to keep you from getting out of the area you're in. Because if you exit, you can like start the evade mode and then you won't have as much trouble getting away from people. Also, if you get alerted, an attack team comes in, which, ha which is brandishing riot shields, so they're much harder to deal with than um, normal, uh, everyday guards in the game. Also... If you want to get away from them, you can do like in the last game where you could crawl into vents or something if you needed to, to get away. Um, but in this game, you can actually get into lockers to hide yourself from them. But you have to make sure you're crouched if they come into the room because they will see you if you are um, standing up. Because they'll see through the slits in the locker. Just the, the you know, entire aspect of gameplay with stealth was amped up so much from the last game because the last game it felt a bit easy to get around guards you know what i mean so in this game it was very very refreshing to be able to to make it harder because just the, in all the gameplay in this game is just amazing you got it's hard innovative amazing just it's amazing it's all great the gameplay is definitely some of my favorite that the ps2 has to offer it's like it's even been said that this is some like for many years it was said that this is some of the best AI, like the best AI in um, gaming. 
Now the story in this game, while it's not as good in my opinion as Metal Gear Solid 1, it <laughs> it's just amazing. Hideo Kojima did an amazing job on this game to deliver a very impressive story. As we all know, I guess explained at the beginning of this video, we had the Tango chapter, you played the Soul Snake, but then of course you eventually are playing as Raiden in like for the rest of the game basically i will talk about that more later but just keep it in mind right now i really want to talk about right in story now in this story it's kind of exactly the same as metal gear solid one you got that terrorist organization they've taken over uh some side of facility and if their demands aren't met to if you, uh their demands aren't met then they will threaten to launch a nuke and but in this game, instead of just exceeding my expectations on the story, it took my expectations, threw them against the wall, flipped them 180 degrees, and shot it three times, and nuked it. Really, I didn't think Metal Gear Solid 2 was going to be more than what it... Because uh, this is like the first Metal Gear Solid game I played. Uh, just started playing. Eventually, my disc got like all screwed up for some reason. Uh, that's another story for another day, but... In this story, it exceeded my expectations so much from what I thought it was going to be. It's kind of insane. Like, you're playing as Raiden, and at points in the game, your, your information that you're given at the beginning is not adding up with other people's information. Or you're learning stuff you didn't even know about, but lots of other people did, and you're wondering whether or not this person you're Kodak calling with, or who gave you this assignment, isn't actually who he or she says they are and you and you wonder if your the objective that you're given is actually the main objective of your mission it honestly is it's just great it has so many parts like this and now I'm going to get into spoiler territory a lot more than um, before so if you don't want to get spoiled I'm gonna post an annotation somewhere that'll tell you where to skip so here we go at one point in the game, you're talking to uh, Pliskin, who, duh, it's Snake. Uh, by the way, nice uh, Escape from New York reference there, Hideo Kojima, good job. Um, you learn, like, about different things that you didn't know about, of course, like I was saying before. But you eventually find the President's aide, I think it was, or something like that. And he tells you there were never any demands that they wanted. They were planning on new shooting a nuke into the atmosphere the entire time. There were never any demands. And the president's actually working for them. <laughs> yeah, you don't know a lot. Anyway, and also the entire big shell is just a cover-up for um, the building of a new Metal Gear called Arsenal Gear, which is basically this huge Metal Gear. It's like a fortress, and it has multiple Metal Gear rays um, to protect it from any uh, invaders and it holds a program called GW which is basically meant to uh, censor and do all these things so that the secret organization of the game the Patriots can shape history how they want it to be made without revealing their true identities it, it gets pretty pretty confusing so there is this whole entire story is not just completely confusing. There are actually a few sad, like touching moments in this, but I'm not. I, and there's a specific one. I'm not going to spoil it or anything. But it's a certain point in the game, and it has a death of a character. And if I hadn't played Metal Gear Solid 3 right before this, I probably would have hit me harder. But it was still a very, very sad moment. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, just. Yeah, it's probably one of the first, like, really sad moments I've had ever seen in a game up to that point. And then there's another part that I'm not going to spoil, but it honestly, uh, the first time I played Metal Gear Solid 2, just the other day I beat it again, but it wasn't the same effect as a few years ago. When I'm playing it for the first time, you're running around as Raiden, and I'm not going to spoil any more than that, but... Uh, he's naked at this point, so if you you know what scene I'm talking about when I mention how creepy it is, because the first time I played this, it was like nighttime. I had to like, if I'm not mistaken, I had to go to school in the morning, so it's like nighttime. I'm trying to rush to beat this game, and it's just 
uh, it was it was a pretty creepy moment, especially mixed with the music at that point. Uh, again, not going to spoil it. You'll have to play the game to figure out what it is on your own. But it, uh, those two point, points in the game are honestly just really great for story aspects. So I didn't get to truly play the Metal Gear Solid games since, uh, uh, for like until like like four or five years ago. Uh, when I was like 14 or 15, I didn't get to play uh, the Metal Gear Solid games uh, until then. Actually, it was more like three or four years. Anyway, so I didn't get to play them. So I didn't know much about Metal Gear Solid because Metal Gear Solid 2 is my first Metal Gear Solid game. And it was, it was, you can imagine my surprise when I get, when I, I knew Solid Snake was the main character. That's what I knew. So you can imagine my surprise when I got through the Tanker chapter and then I started playing as Raiden, and I was wondering when I was going to play as Snake again. Now, keep in mind, I had played a lot of PS2 games up to this point. So, it wasn't an uncommon thing for a PS2 game to switch you over to a separate character for a little while before switching you back. So, I was just wondering when I was going to play as Snake again the entire game. I'm like, okay, when am I going to play Snake again? Come on. What's going on? <laughs> it was honest. I was honestly very surprised by this. To say the least. Now I'm going to have to get, go against the majority of the internet here and say I don't hate Raiden at all. I don't think he's a terrible character. Only thing I wouldn't exactly say I liked about him was the fact that his voice actor made him sound a lot younger than he actually was. And, and like the parts he's put in through during the game. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. But other than that, what's the problem with it? I know like people were cocked he's... Uh, by Hideo Kojima in which like he they just he just didn't say anything about Raiden being the playable character at all I thought it was pretty interesting. It's just clever that Hideo Kojima was able to do that because I didn't even know when I went to first play this game That I would be playing as Raiden the rest of the game at all I didn't because I'd never heard anything about it up to this point when I first got Metal Gear Solid 2 So it was like oh, okay. I guess we're playing as this guy the rest of the game Yeah, I mean he's a like, he gets some adequate character development, and by the end, you realize what the point of you playing as him the entire game was. So, I thought that was very nice how they did that. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't understand the hate. I think people are just mad because of that reason. Because he was never announced, and they wanted to play as Solid Snake so badly. And, of course, at the end of the game, <laughs> Hideo Kojima completely references this and people still don't like Raiden and it's just hilarious that the people who hate on him don't realize what the joke was at all so I yeah it's just really it's just really funny that people hate on him so much because it's not a valid reason to hate this game it's a good game despite what you might think of Raiden as a character other notable characters include Solid Snake of course and and the one thing I want to point out is that I like the introduction of Raiden because he makes Solid Snake seem that much better by the end of the game. Uh, and then, of course, we have Otacon, who, uh, he gets some pretty good character development and lots of crappy scenes with it. Like, not bad, but, like, just terrible. Like, there, he has bad luck with women, whether or not he's in a room, in, whether or not he, um, loves them in the romantic type of way. He has bad luck <laughs> with them. Oh my gosh, you'll see when you find out in the game. The boss battles of this game um, were fairly easy to me, but uh, this was probably because I just got off of playing Metal Gear Solid 3, so I can't exactly complain. So, you, and all the bosses in this game are, even though the, some of the boss battles are e too easy a little bit, they're all very memorable and just have really fun boss battles and it has some of the best boss battle music I have ever heard in a game because it's, it's just amazing and the bosses include a mad bomber who runs around who goes around on roller skates planting bombs and you have to take him out a supposed vampire a, lay, a woman who cannot be harmed in any way even if she wants to kill herself or harm herself she cannot do it and she carries a huge rail gun and the leader of the terrorist organization, who is also a copy, an exact copy clone of Big Boss, and was also the president of the United States, and has Doc Ock 
<laughs> um, mechanical arms, and dual wields katanas and uses a P90. Now, if those aren't memorable bosses, I don't know what are. Now, as much as I want to talk about themes in this uh, video, if I was to go on about um, what I've read about and whatnot, uh, this video would be about an hour long. Uh, you can go figure out much different themes and symbolism for this game somewhere else because I'm not going to talk too much in depth about it. So, uh, I, But I will explain some of the themes that um, uh, accompany this game. We got stuff ranging from nerd culture, government, uh, conspiracies, memes, sexuality, AI, child abuse, um, and incest. I just want you to keep in mind that this game was made back in 2001. So, yeah, a few touchy topics there. I think what Kojima wanted to do when he made this game, he wanted to take game stories and themes and all that and take it beyond what, um, and he just wanted to make it more than what people usually made. And I think he just did a fantastic job of that. I really gotta promote, I really gotta compliment him for his complexity and convoluted story. It's just all amazing and it includes one of the best secret groups in any game ever known as the Patriots. Like, it's probably one of my favorite secret groups ever. Now all the music for this game was, was done by um, a man known by the name, a man named <laughs> Harry Gregson Williams who has done uh, music for a lot of movies, um, and he uh, worked out of Hans Zimmer's studio to do the music for this game. Hideo Kojima himself wanted him to do the music for this after seeing The Replacement Killers, and he was a great choice, <laughs> I gotta say that much, because all the music in this game is just great ear candy to me. We got, when you're around in gameplay segments, walking around, you always have these like ambient themes, you know, like kind of techno-ish, or when you're fighting a boss, you have this great techno-esque uh, theme playing. But when you're in cutscenes and stuff, you got more of like this orchestrated music going on and whatnot. It's really, really great music uh, done. I can't exactly explain in detail how much more like the music is great. Also, the main theme of this game, holy crap, listen to that, and that's what that's what how good the music of this game is there you go it honestly is very good definitely should uh not play the game for the music but just uh, check out the music it's really great and listen to it while you're playing the game too the graphics in this game also got a huge upscale compared to metal gear solid one you could clearly see faces now um in the actual cutscenes and in the codec calls the environments look better the weather effects the uh, water effects, just the time of day, all of it just looks amazing. Uh, it all just works together so perfectly to create a great game. And while I don't particularly judge games on graphics too often because I think you can't just judge a game on it, it's some of the best ga graphics I have seen on the PS2 uh, until I played Metal Gear Solid 3. And I'll, we'll get to that when we get to that review. Now, I'm not going to spoil too much for the ending, but I will explain the basic gist of what happens. Eventually, you as Raiden have a sword. You'll figure out how you did that. And you defeat Solidus Snake, um, the terrorist leader. And then Snake comes to you telling that he had tracked Liquid's uh, ray down. That um, he had put, he had placed a tracking device on it so that they can find um, a woman's child that would have been killed if Raiden had been killed at any point during the game. And uh, then uh, Snake tells him to go get on with his life and choose the life for himself. And at one point, you enter information into the, a node for the first time. And at the end of the game, you have dog tags and it has all that information on it. You rip them off and Raiden rips them off and throws them. And because he's going to be his own person, he's not going to be the player anymore. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but, and, and then it ends, he finds, um, Rose, his uh, girlfriend that he talks to over the Kodak multiple times during the game, and they decide how they're going to spend the rest of their days, and 
with that, it kind of leaves the story open for interpretation as to whether or not all this is actually happening. But we, you figure out that out in Metal Gear Solid 4, and that's basically the ending of this game. Guys, Metal Gear Solid 2 is not only an important game in gaming, but in society in general. This was considered to be the first game in what we now call postmodern video games because of its themes, its controversial story, the way the game plays out, and just the gameplay itself, you know what I mean? And it is an important game to me, and it is just one of the one of the one of the best games ever. It really is great. Hideo Kojima did, of course, an amazing job again. And even though it's my least favorite title in all of Metal Gear Solid, I'm still gonna say that Metal Gear Solid 2 is pure amazingness. <laughs> Don't get drugged into the hate that this game gets because Raiden's the main character. You're gonna do yourself a disservice not to play it. And yeah, while it is my least favorite of the Metal Gear Solid games I have played and or watched gameplay of on YouTube, it's still just an amazing game for all the things I've talked about in the review above. Uh, but the game to top them both, both 1 and 2, Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, is gonna be Metal Gear Solid 3. And you'll see what I mean by that when I get to my review later. And, guys, I want to thank you so much again for watching. I know sometimes my videos can get a little long. This one especially is pretty long. I mean, I have a four-page script I made just for this game. I mean, whoo! But I just want to thank you so much for sitting through it. And if you like this video, please do not forget to like it. And subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And in the comments below, please tell me what you thought of Metal Gear Solid 2 if you played it. And if you haven't played it, do that. And then please, um, and why are you watching this video if you haven't played it? Come on, don't not play the game. Come on, get with it. And with that, guys, I just want to thank you again for watching. And I don't have anything to say, so I'll just say goodbye.